Hello, welcome, Cabbage here. So let's talk about the last bosses of the Elden Ring DLC, Shadow of the Earth Tree, from a story lore perspective. I previously talked about them mechanically, I'll link to that video below. In the background, I'll show my third clear of him with my Argo New Game Plus One character. Same method as my previous clears, block and bleed, but no summons for this clear. First of all, in the big picture, I loved the last bosses, Mikola and Radon, from a story lore perspective. I had heard a lot of disappointment on the choice of Radon for the consort. They wanted someone else, or they wanted someone all new. But I immediately recognized, it doesn't matter who is the consort. It could be frickin' Patches, it doesn't matter, because Mikola is the real adversary here. This is his story. And we can talk about Mikola first, and then Radon after. I ended up loving how they handled Mikola. In the base game, if we were thorough in exploration and paying attention to the hints, his presence and influence looms over a lot of the game. There's more than enough other characters and storylines in the base game to fill the stage there, but then we turn to the DLC, and Mikola comes into the spotlight because the story becomes about his journey. There too, we have to explore and pay attention to the hints, because we don't actually meet him until the very end. But what we get in Mikola in the DLC is a rival. That is something that is missing in the base game. Sure, there are other tarnished contenders for the throne, but like Bernal has given up, Vike veered off the path, and the vast majority of the other tarnished have no desire to even try. And sure, there are demigod bosses, but most of them seem more like static obstacles rather than actively seeking to lead. Renala and Radon and Rykard are out of their heads. Moog does seek to establish a new rule, but as we see in the DLC, he is only a tool. No one takes Godric seriously. Millennia and Malekith do not seek lordship, they instead serve. Placidosix is trapped in time. Morgoth and Gideon have resigned themselves to the idea that no one can claim the title of Elden Lord. That leaves Godfrey, who was previously Elden Lord, but it feels like his time has passed, that having lost Mariko's blessing, his efforts are futile. And so, Mikola feels like a true rival. He has the power and he has the plan. He feels like the truest threat to take the Elden Throne, and therefore, we must defeat him so that we can claim it for ourselves. And that actually adds weight to the purpose of our journey. It makes it feel like we earned it, not just through might, but also right. And since Mikola has his own vision for his rule, an era of compassion and peace through mind control, essentially, that puts into greater relief our vision for our rule. It adds more weight to our choice of which ending. I promise you a thousand year voyage guided by compassion. I've heard folks complain the quote-unquote ending of the DLC feels anticlimactic or empty, but it's not an ending at all. It's a climax that solidifies our hero status and sets us up all the more for the ending of the base game. I feel it's a masterful bit of storytelling to enhance our journey through the base game while being its own contained thing. Here I want to gush on the characterization of Mikola. The first thing that impressed me about him was the casting of the voice. Just perfect. I have spoken many times about how the quality of a voice in Japanese voice acting speaks volumes about the character's personality, and here it is so rare, the English voice casting captures the essence of that character. We have an androgynous voice that gives off vibes of purity and youth and lordliness. Japanese folks or any non-English speaker hearing his lines 
even without subtitles, would pick up on all of that. And I want to draw the comparison between Mikola's voice and Leon's voice from Near Reincarnation. Different languages, but similar quality that tells us similar things about the characters. Lord of the Old Order, let us go together. Leon is not the only example. We see many young androgynous characters in Japanese media. We see many boy king characters in Japanese media, but we don't often see them in adversary roles. They are more often sympathetic characters. But then Mikola is that too. He is our adversary and he is sympathetic. That leads us to have conflicted feelings about taking him on, which I love. What Mikola wants is good, a rule of peace and compassion. And he has tried a number of times to achieve that, stuff like the Halig Tree, and then all of it failing. And so in the DLC, we see him trying one last Hail Mary, which asks for a great sacrifice of himself and doing some morally gray stuff like manipulating people or skirting rules. I see similarities between him and Ronnie. Mikola has become desperate, and while we know in our heads he is wrong, in our hearts maybe we can relate to what he is feeling, or at the very least feel pity for him. Mikola is a tragic character because he has lost all sense of himself, and to take him down is actually a mercy, as his counterpart Saint Trina tells us. He's quite complex, like his mother Marika, and both their arcs speak to how, despite best intentions, power, or the search for power, can corrupt. Here let's turn to Radon. I said it doesn't matter who is the consort, but looking at the end result, Radon was a great choice. Mikola has no physical power. His curse is the one of eternal youth. So for his consort, he better choose someone strong. And who better than Radon, the greatest warrior of his time? That led to an awesome boss and an awesome battle. And I don't mean awesome in the Bill and Ted sense, I mean in the original sense. It fills us, the viewer, with awe. And that is what you want for one of the climaxes of the game. Just yesterday, I fought the Radon in the base game, and the difference is pretty striking. Base game Radon, through his animations and attacks, really comes across as like a brain-dead, savage, rabid animal, while DLC Radon is just as fierce, but measured and elegant, like a lion. As for Radon fitting the lore, Mikola saw aspects of Radon that were in line with his own thinking, things like kindness and forthrightness. Also, conveniently, Mikola saw in Radon something to exploit, his love of war. So Mikola promised Radon life beyond death and eternal war, thus convincing Radon to accept being Mikola's consort, paving the way to godhood and rule over the lands between. The choice of Radon makes a lot of sense to me, both in gameplay terms and story terms, so I'm happy with how it all turned out. Finally, I want to talk about the music of The Last Battle. I love the first phase song, Base Game Radon and DLC Radon are based on the same themes and melodies, but somber in the former, grand in the latter. But it's the second phase song that amazes me. It was featured in the trailer. It has a marching momentum and pure soaring beauty that reminds me a lot of the soundtrack work from Ogre Battle and Final Fantasy Tactics, some of my favorite soundtracks ever. And while, of course, the second phase music represents Mikola, his journey, his mission. In fighting the last boss, in that context, the nature of the song changed for me, and I came around to feeling that this theme was my theme, that it was cheering me on to victory. It just felt too positive and encouraging and heroic to not feel that way, and I felt like more of a badass fighting the last boss because of it. <laughs> Maybe I'm imagining things, but my story felt elevated for it, which provided even more of a springboard to the ending of the base game. I felt more like a hero than I ever had in any previous From Software game. So yeah, I liked pretty much everything about the last bosses, and to the people who were disappointed, my advice is to try not to come to narratives with a square block already in hand, because the narrative might give you a round hole. Instead, come at the narrative with hands empty, see the round hole, then pick up a round block, 
then reflect on how you felt about the narrative afterwards. Okay, that'll do it for this video. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again. Take care.